Hey guys welcome to a new video, like comment and subscribe if you enjoy. Without any further interruptions, enjoy the what if. Chapter 10 Maelstrom Unleashed All of them waited with held breaths, wanting to know what the blonde enigma was trying to achieve by closing his eyes in the midst of a match. All of their eyes widened when they felt the sudden increase of chakra from the Naruto, the effects of the white chakra flowing in waves in the arena. Just like in the forest, all of them felt at peace, comfortable while warmness flowed through their bodies. What is this feeling? It's so, calm, peaceful, serene, comfortable. But, what's happening here? Thought Mei while Naruto's eyes were still closed for the dramatic effect, he couldn't see their faces but at least he could imagine it. Meanwhile, all of the Junins, Chunins, Genins and the Three Cages welcomed and basked in this strange aura with a mix of confusion. It's just like in the forest, but this time it is much stronger, thought the Genins and Kurenai who had experienced this firsthand in the forest of death except Sasuke who was confused as hell as to what was going on, while he could feel his curse mark acting negatively towards this chakra. Orochimaru too was wide-eyed at this strange peaceful aura surprised and confused that Naruto's chakra is able to produce such effects. If his chakra would have radiated bloodlust, he could understand as Naruto was a Jinchuriki and his chakra could have been tainted by the Kyubi, but this was completely unexplainable. This chakra is the exact opposite of Yuki, but still is strong and dense. You truly are interesting Naruto-kun, if only you had a promising bloodline, I would have preferred your body instead of Sasuke-kun. Although I'm still not able to decipher as to how you're able to use ice element at such age, but you just maybe be my next vessel if Sasuke-kun fails, he thought with an inward sinister laugh. M. Mizukage sama T. This as I am impossible. This Gaki has white sea-colored chakra, it's N not normal blue, said Ao in astonishment, his Byakugan activated while Mei and Chojiro's eyes widened further, if it was even possible. B. But H. How can it be be possible A. Ao Senpei? stuttered Chojiro timidly, voicing what Mei wanted to say while Ao just shook his head to signify that he had no idea whatsoever. Naruto slowly opened his eyes, some of the Junin straightaway fainted from shock who knew about Rinnegan and thought about it as only a myth. It was like a bombshell being dropped on everyone present there except the Ice Queens and Hiruzen. Some were surprised that he had a bloodline and a dujutsu at that and the experienced Junins and the two cages were astounded to the limit of infinity as they thought of Rinnegan as only a myth. Purple eyes, black dot pupil with one ring surrounding it, it was clear as a day for those who had read about his legendary dujutsu. His eyes seemed to have to a purple glow, possibly because of excess flow of charka through his optical chakra coils. The expression on Orochimaru's face was priceless, it was like Itachi himself was offering him the Sharingan. H. How is this possible? Two Rinnegan users, I thought only Pain possessed it, but he has three rings while this Jinchuriki has only one which means he still hasn't tapped its full potential. Although I still prefer Sharingan to copy Ninjutsu, but I think I'll give my present to Naruto-kun and the Hyuga heiress. Just imagine, Having all the three great dujutsus in my possession will make me the strongest shinobi alive and with eternal Mangeku Sharingan I'll be immortal, Kukuku, he thought while inwardly cackling to himself. Hum, I still can't control the amount of chakra I put behind my eyes to activate Rinnegan leading to them blowing a bit, which can be dangerous for me in sneak missions at nights. Although my chakra control is much better than before, but considering that my chakra reserves increased too, my chakra control still needs vast amounts of improvement, he thought while mentally making notes as to in what areas he would need to work extensively. He was brought out of his thoughts when he heard an excited shout. Yash Naruto-kun, your flames of youth are glowing in your eyes. We shall fight an honest and a sweaty battle to determine WHO is better, said Lee while pumping his fists in air leading to Naruto's eyebrows getting twitched in irritation. Seriously, is there anything that can surprise this guy? But hmm, I wonder how Sasuke and Itachi would sound like if they acted like Lee and his sensei here. Oh I know. H.N. Itachi-kun, your flames of youth have dampened. How dare you pour unyouthful water on our arrogance flaming, sharing and blazing, jutsu crazin, fugaku motherfucking, piece of, youthful clan. I will distinguish your unyouthful existence with my youthful Sharingan. Foolish little brother. You do not have enough youthful flames of hatred, and you know what? Your flames of dick will always be weak. But do not worry Sasuke-kun, I will cleanse you of your unyouthful dick. 
Kisame kum. Give me the samahata. Yeah, baby. Samahata shaves. You know what? He he he. I wonder if should write a book like the Toad Sanin, whose title would be Aika Uchiha Kill the Traitor Tactics starring Emo Uchiha and an Emo Tionless Uchiha. Yeah, it would be a widespread sale on the scale of epidemic. Damn I need to concentrate, there's a match going on, but geez. How much time will these guys keep staring at me like that? It's not like I slaughtered the Hyuga clan by myself in one night, he thought before observing Lee's underdeveloped chakra coils. Meanwhile, it looked like nobody was ready to move on. Kakashi had both of his eyes widened along with Sakura, who was sputtering incoherently and Sasuke, who must have been thinking, this shit got no dibs on Sharingan, it's the best yo. Both A and Mei turned their heads to look at Hiruzen for answers who only said one word, later, before they looked towards the the blonde Gaki again, not in the mood to argue with the Hokage when there's an interesting match going on. I I can't believe it. After so many years, it has been awakened. Ooh kitten, look how sexy he looks with those dominating eyes, come on you gotta snatch him before anybody else does. I wonder if he's as much dominating in bed, heard Nibi inside Yugito's head who was blushing a storm, so surprised that she couldn't even berate her biju. Meanwhile Shukaku was screaming in Gara's head to stay away from those eyes while Hachibi too, although not on a psychotic scale like Shukaku, but still warned B to be wary of this gaki. Meanwhile, Naruto had decided that it was time to continue the match before he created a shadow clone, again surprising the visitors Reikage, Mizukage and their groups. Dosu's eyes widened when the shadow clone completely disappeared from his vision while Lee could still see him as he was used to such speed movements. The clone suddenly appeared in front of Dosu, startling him before giving him an uppercut leading to the sound gen and loosing some teeth and propelling towards the ceiling. Just as he was about to crash, the clone again appeared in a blur before delivering a lethal dropkick to his midsection leading to Dosu getting the wind knocked out of him. Such was the force of the blow that he disappeared in a blur before crashing on the floor creating a crater. Dosu couldn't move, blood was leaking out of his mouth, his eyes half litted and multiple bruises covered his body. He knew several bones in his body were broken and was in a whole world of pain right now. His eyes again widened when he felt the cold metal of a kunai pressed against his neck by the clone who seemingly had appeared out of nowhere. That was for how you treated Kin Chan you asshole. And if you ever treat her like that again, there'll be hell to pay, you got that, whispered the clone fiercely while adding chakra to his rinnegan, which glowed further adding to his threatening glare while Dosu could only nod, the small action in itself sending jolts of pain throughout his body. Now are you gonna give up or should I just finish you off? He said pressing the kunai further, drawing a thin line of blood from his skin. P. Proctor, I, give, up, he said in rasped breaths, barely able to speak before slipping into unconsciousness. Meanwhile, the spectators were again stunned by the speed and the brutality of the hits that Naruto had delivered to the poor Genin, although he only delivered two hits. Rakage had a knowing smirk on his face, excited to see a taijutsu spar that he knew would be coming. So far he had seen that the green weird genin only used taijutsu whereas the hokage had explained to him that he couldn't use genjutsu or ninjutsu. And with the speed that the weirdo was moving he knew the kayubi jinchuriki wouldn't be able to complete hand signs for ninjutsu or genjutsu, so he too would have to resort to taijutsu. He was ecstatic, very much so. Kin Tu was silently cheering for Naruto and was quite happy with the blows Dosu received from him even though it was not enough payment for how he beated her almost every day she was just happy that Naruto cared for her. Sasuke as usual being his emo self, was gritting his teeth in frustration and anger towards Naruto, how dare the dobi outclass him. Sakura had admiration in her eyes, but she along with almost everyone still hadn't gotten over the shock that Naruto possessed a dujutsu. Kakashi didn't know if his eyes would return to normal size anytime soon, as they just kept widening with the things that Naruto was pulling out there. Although he knew Naruto had talent as he had helped him in training in private, but this was ridiculous. How could he have gotten so much strong, and his appearance too? He was just praying that these preliminaries would end up as soon as possible so he could get some answers. The Ice Queens were watching with proud smiles on their faces while their eyes held love, admiration and lust, something which was only reserved for Naruto. Are you watching this Sheena Ne Chan, your son is kicking some serious ass here. You would be proud at how Naru-kun is turning out to be, 
thought Anko with a serene smile, while tears threatened to pour out of her chocolate brown eyes. She wanted so much for Naruto to meet his mother, but fate deemed it impossible after all, and she was sounding like a certain Hyuga now. She quickly focused on the match, sucking up on her tears as she had a badass image to maintain. Meanwhile Samui had a small blush on her face while her eyes held somewhat akin to admiration as well as frustration. Admiration because of how strong Naruto was despite how the villagers treated him and frustration because ever since she saw him, this damn blush wouldn't go away. Seriously, what was wrong with her? She was regarded as the next ice queen after Yugido in her village and this boy, no man, was able to do that with just his looks, without even speaking. And his smile, damn. How cute can he look more, wasn't his handsome face enough already? His muscular, but not overly, slim-toned body wasn't doing any justice to her hormones too. And damn, oh my god, she was sounding like a pervert now. Nay nay Samui, how come your icy cheeks are suddenly so red? Asked Karui with a knowing grin while Samui was caught off guard with her comment. W what do why you mean? She stuttered while Karui's grin widened. Oh, nothing. Really nothing, said Karui with her teasing grin while Samui inwardly groaned, she knew she was in for a whole world of teasing once the preliminaries ended. The way you said nothing, it certainly sounded like something, said Omoi while sucking his lollipop, before a vein popped on Karui's forehead. Shutup Baka, she said while hitting him over the head, before his beloved lollipop again popped out of his mouth and fell on the dirty floor. Would you stop doing that? Now my lolly chan is all dirty now, he yelled at her heatedly while she again yelled at him, I would stop if you wouldn't act like an idiot, their foreheads grinding against each other, sparks flying out from the friction if that was even possible while the nearby junins looked at the pair awkwardly, the others too focused on the match to see anything else. Meanwhile Yugido was blushing up a storm from the constant ramblings by her perverted two-tailed demon, and could only put her hands on her cheeks to hide it. Don't hide ya blush on her cheek, ya should have a pervy peak, wrapped the Hachibi Jinchuriki followed by a bonk on the head from a flustered Yugido. Jeez, wasn't her pervert of a biju not enough? Come on Lee, are you planning on just standing there all day, yelling about your flames of youth? Said Naruto mockingly while Lee's face suddenly took an uncharacteristic serious expression. I'll defeat you with everything I have Naruto-kun, he said fiercely while Naruto just created some shadow clones. They all grinned at Lee before vanishing from the genin's sight while Lee too disappeared in a blur. Both sides threw punches and kicks towards each other, which were mainly a blur to the genins. They would only appear for a while before again vanishing and continuing with their reckless attacks, as Shikamaru would say it. Lee was surprised that Naruto and his shadow clones were easily dodging and countering his attacks, earlier of which he couldn't even see. Lee suddenly ducked under a punch before back flipping away from Naruto who just stood there while he dispelled the remaining shadow clones. I see that we're evenly matched in speed Naruto-kun, indeed you're a worthy opponent, said Lee before gazing towards Guy, as if asking for permission for something while his sensei, who was uncharacteristically serious nodded. Yash Naruto-kun, now you'll see the spring time of youth. I think this match has dragged on for much longer, it's time to end this, said Lee while Naruto wondered what else could the taijutsu genin be hiding under his belt. Meanwhile Kakashi had suspected about Lee's next attack and was currently explaining that to Sakura and Sasuke, the latter having a maniacal glint in his eyes about possibly getting more power. Lee held his elbows in cross position in front of his chest, while his face was scrunched up in concentration. Hanada's eyes widened, who had her second level of Byakugan activated for the time being, when she saw his first chakra gate slowing opening. Naruto, Kakashi, Sasuke and Neji couldn't see that much detail as Hinata's eyes, but they could see the sudden increase in chakra flow when Lee whispered. Kaiman. Kai, gate of opening. Release Naruto's eyes widened while Lee's muscles could be seen bulging a bit along with increased chakra flow. He had read about the eight chakra gates during his secret study hours he spent in library, but it was a forbidden technique wasn't it? Shit, that was unexpected, I wonder how many gates is he able to open at this point of time. But, if he's going that far, I guess I should go further too, thought Naruto before a look of concentration formed on his face, his elbows on his side before a blue sparking electricity started covering his fist. Lightning fist, 
He whispered while the wreckage and his companions had their jaws on the ground when they saw the blue layer of sparking lightning completely covering Naruto's hands. Holy shit, that's my technique, although an incomplete one. Mine too looked like that when I was developing it. But I've never taught this technique to anyone, could it be that he developed this himself? Even covering your hands with lightning natured chakra takes almost a year to accomplish, just what this kid is actually capable of. I don't know about Junin, but he easily equals an elite Chunin, thought a while Hiruzen just had calm look on his face, taking into account just what Naruto had learned in that training with Itachi. Meanwhile Mei was desperately trying to not look surprised with what both the Genins were pulling out there. Nope, I'm not impressed at all. Yep, this is nothing. Yep. Yep, oh my god, how can he open chakra gates at such? Dot dot, nope, nothing at all. He must be much older than he looks, yep I bet he is. He's just under a sort of transformation jutsu. But that blonde gaki looks so hot with that lightning. Dot dot, no, 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 it's probably just a genjutsu. Kai, 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 damn it. Thought Mei with a cheery smile while inwardly she was crying anime tears. She was known in her village for her calm, composed and cheery temper after all. She couldn't just be anxious about something so trivial, right? Right. The gates, she could understand as the green karate kid was extremely good in taijutsu and could probably match most of the chunins. But what was with that blonde gaki? Almost all of the techniques he had used up until now, were suicidal even for chunins, he was a jinchuriki she could understand but even they had their limits and he was only 12 or 13 years old for heaven's sake. Kaiyuman. Kai, gate of rest. Release whispered Lee while Chakra was visible now around him in a sheen layer having a blue hue while Naruto just waited for him patiently, who had already decided that he would be using his full speed now. Simon. Kai, gate of life. Release again said the green-clad genin while his hair started wavering in mid-air. The air got thicker around him with the color density of the chakra layer getting increased and his pupils were no longer visible. Dust was picking up around him violently while all the genins watched this in awe, wondering if they even had a chance if they had fought any two of these, they seemed to be in a whole other league. Lee looked up with his pupil-less white eyes, his skin taking on a slight red hue before he again blurred out of genin's sight completely with much greater speed than before. Even some of the low-level Junins were having trouble spotting him, while Samui, Karui and Darui couldn't even see him unlike before. The Genins were clueless as before as to where Lee was while Sasuke was barely able to keep up with him even with his Sharingan, although Kakashi could easily see him even with his naked eye as he was an elite Junin for a reason. The Ice Queens being the prodigies too were easily able to keep track of Lee but were shocked at his speed and couldn't help but worry for Naruto. Even Kurenai had doubts if Naruto could move that fast. Lee suddenly appeared behind Naruto going for a kick at the back of his head and to everyone's shock and amazement, Naruto ducked before planting a spinning kick on Lee's stomach sending him crashing him into the wall. Never underestimate your opponent's bushy brow, especially me, said Naruto with a serious expression on his face, again surprising everyone with his speed. Meanwhile Guy had a shocked expression on his face. Never did he thought that a genin would be able to match the power of not one, but three celestial gates. He is something else, the villagers treat him like he's a loser but look at him now. He's kicking my strongest student's ass even when he is in celestial gate mode, thought guy with a hidden smirk, mainly because he cared for Naruto, although not on the level of Lee but still he knew what the Jinchuriki had to go through in his life. He was grinning in anticipation as to how Naruto would handle himself when Lee goes further. Meanwhile Lee too was surprised with the strength that Naruto had kicked him with, it was much greater than before. He's able to keep up with me even when I'm in celestial mode, and the strength in that kick was much greater than before, was he holding back too? You truly are the strongest opponent I could have gotten Naruto-kun, thought Lee with a smirk while wiping the blood off his face, the layer of chakra around him flaring as he stood up while he could feel the second gate healing his injuries. It's only because of the Rinnegan that I'm able to see his movements. What if I had never even activated this Dujutsu, was I that weak? He would have beaten me in a blink. I don't want to rely on my Dujutsu for everything. How am I to become Hokage if I rely so heavily on Rinnegan and not do any hard work to hone my skills? That's the main reason I guess no one from the Uchiha clan could become Hokage except maybe Uchiha Makoto, 
known as the Kami no Kawarimi, god of substitution, for she had her own skills besides the Sharingan. He thought while clenching his fists, hating the fact that he has to rely on Rinnegan just to see his movements. Never keep your eyes off the enemy Naruto-kun, especially me, retorted Lee in a whisper after appearing behind Naruto, whose eyes were widened before he felt an excruciating pain in his back, result of Lee kicking him as hard as he could. Naruto was sent flying towards the wall at high speeds. Shit, how could I lose focus in the middle of a fight? He thought while berating himself before Lee suddenly again appeared in front of him, giving him an uppercut to his jaw sending Naruto upwards in midair. While Naruto was horizontally in midair, Lee was suddenly behind Naruto in a flash before wrapping the white bandages around his body which were earlier on his forearms. All of this had happened in span of a second for the spectators, such was the speed of their movements while the next thing the genin could see was Naruto wrapped in bandages from Lee behind him, both of them descending fast towards the floor while rotating. Omit Renge, Hidden Lotus, yelled Lee as their speed of descending increased while they continued to rotate. Just one moment of lost focus can cost you dearly Naruto-kun, and now you'll pay the price for it, thought Guy while the Ice Queens kept a neutral face on the outside but were worried sick for him. They knew if that attack was successful Naruto wouldn't be getting up soon, even with his fast recovering rates. It's over Naruto-kun, said Lee while Naruto just smirked. Lee's along with everyone's eyes widened when some of the small chunks of wall that were lying on the floor due to the fights puffed in smoke to reveal shadow clones who formed a circle surrounding the center of where Lee and Naruto were anticipated to crash. All of the clones did fast hand seals, much faster than before putting large amounts of chakra, ending on the snake seal before they yelled in chorus. Rantan. Zufukufu Bufusetsu, storm release. Amplifying wind blizzard, as suddenly the wind around them started to form a rotating fierce whirlwind at the center carrying currents of blue electricity and grew in size to that of a small tornado. Lee's eyes widened when he felt their speed slowing down at fast rates before both of them started to rotate with the whirlwind. Lee grit his teeth when he felt the sharp currents of lightning in the wind attack him, it felt like thousand needles were piercing him while he was surprised when Naruto remained completely unaffected from the jutsu. Immediately loosening his wrappings around Naruto, Lee used his super speed in the celestial gate mode to escape the raging storm. Everyone present had to shield their eyes off the dust and wind that seemed to raging in the arena, putting large cuts and gashes on the wall and concrete floor. Rakage's eyes widened when he saw the electricity in the wind. What? This is not the storm element that Darui uses. The Gaki is using wind with lightning here while Darui uses water with lightning to form laser-like attacks, but this storm element is much better for wide-range attacks, he thought while Yugito and B were having thoughts along the same line. W what power? said Ao while shielding his eyes, easily able to see with his Byakugan the huge amount of chakra that the blonde Jinchuriki had put up in that jutsu. Meanwhile Mei had decided that she just had to meet this Jinchuriki, there was something about besides his looks that attracted her to him, she just had this urge to know him. He was different from anyone she'd ever met, the kind of power he possessed at such young age, she would have expected that he would flaunt his skills. But from the start of the match, he was calm, composed and not easy to anger. Although sometimes, he lacked focus but considering what he had went through his life, there must be an inferno going in his head or maybe the Kyubi could be the reason for this, she didn't know but was dying to meet him. Meanwhile the Ice Queens were stunned at the damage level the attack had caused, all the walls were tattered with multiple deep cuts while a deep crater had formed on the floor where the epicenter of the supposed whirlwind was. Considering the amount of cuts on the wall, they could tell that this attack was capable of taking out large number of enemies simultaneously. Slowly the whirlwind died down to show Naruto standing at the center of it apparently unharmed while Lee could be seen standing at a distance from him, having multiple cuts and bruises all over his body. His green splandex was teared in multiple places while blood was leaking out of his forehead, whereas Lee was panting a bit from the strain the third gate was starting to put on him. Give up Lee! I can see that opening the forbidden chakra gates are starting to put strain on your body. This match is over, it's not worth to put your career at risk, said Naruto with an emotionless tone, while inwardly he was a bit worried for the guy. Of course Lee was a weird, loudmouth, sometimes irritating but he had come to like the genin as he saw himself in Lee. Although Lee acted crazy with the flames of youth, crap and all, 
but Naruto could see that he had a good heart and didn't want him to put his ninja career at risk just for a preliminary match, as Naruto was pretty sure with skills that Lee had displayed in front of the three cages, he was sure to progress to the finals so there was no need for him to push himself past his body limits. And no I will. Prove myself. Dot and I wouldn't find a better opponent. To do so, prepare yourself Naruto-kun, said Lee while panting as he again crossed his arms in front of his face. Shoman. Kai, gate of wound. Release, said Lee while his muscles bulged further, his veins now visible while the chakra around him flared much greater than before his skin's shade of red darkening while the ground started to crack under his feet. Naruto was thrown for the loop when he saw Lee opening the fourth gate, he had read that beyond the third gate, although you gain further speed and power, but the body muscles begin to tear under the pressure of so much chakra being released at once. He was about to yell when Lee screamed. Toman. Kai. Gate of limit. Release dust spun wildly around his feet, a small crater forming under his feet the density of chakra increasing further while his hair flowing upwards due to the force of excess chakra. His muscles started to further expand as the veins were now more visible on his skin, while Lee winced when he felt the pressure being exerted on his muscles. This guy's crazy. Does he want to die or better, does he want to kill me? He's taking it too far, I can already see his muscles starting to rip apart. I was giving my all in taijutsu when he had the third gate opened but I wouldn't even be able to see him now, much less match his speed. I can't even do hand seals for ninjutsu if he's that fast. I think I have to use Ayumi chans chakra, for mine as well as for his sake, thought Naruto while panicking a bit, he didn't want to use Ayumi's chakra, but the situation here called for him to finish the match as fast as possible. Lee, you were this powerful all along, thought a surprised Neji, he had never thought that Lee could become this much powerful with hard work alone but he was curious as to what fate had in store for his green-clad teammate. I don't think I can match him in taijutsu any longer, then I'll just have to resort to a combination of ninjutsu and taijutsu, thought our favorite blonde before putting his hands in a crisscross sign, using large amounts of chakra. Taju Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, multi-shadow clone jutsu, he said, the result of which everyone's eyes getting out of their sockets except the ones who knew about his expertise in this jutsu but even they were surprised that he still had this much chakra left after using jutsus which would have easily exhausted a junin. The whole arena was filled with white trenchcoat wearing blondes wearing smirk on their faces. The floor where the match was taking place was completely occupied by his clones, some of them were standing on upper railings, some of them sitting leisurely on the large ram hand seal, some of them standing upside down on the ceiling while the rest of them were standing among the junins and the three cages, who had their jaws on the floor. Why oh? All the clones chorused except the original Naruto who was panting a bit, as using sub-elemental as well as the elemental jutsus along with his average chakra control took a toll on him, while Kakashi just sweat dropped. That's my line, he thought while shaking his head at the antics of his sensei's legacy, or rather his clones. This kid just doesn't stop surprising me, thought a with an amused grin before he was interrupted, hey muscle man, give us some space will ya? It's tight around here, said a clone among the others while A's eyebrows twitched at the nickname whereas Yugido, Mei and Karui giggled while Samui had a smirk on her face. It's not my fault you created so many clones Gaki, replied a heatedly while a vein popped on his forehead when he saw the middle finger in front of his face, courtesy of the same clone, up yours sucker, he said while Mei and Yugido couldn't hold it in and burst out laughing. It wasn't every day you see a genin insulting a cage fearlessly whereas a just punch the clone leading to it getting dispelled, a furious expression on the Rakage's face. Don't take it personally Rakage Dono, sometimes some of his clones have their own individual personality traits, which I've no idea how's that possible, said a chuckling Hiruzen while a just took deep breaths to calm himself, Mei and Yugito still snickering lightly which was stopped by a glare from A. Mei turned around when she felt someone tap on her shoulder to come face to face with yet another clone who gave her a charming smile leading to a blush adorning the cheeks of the beautiful redhead. You're the famed godaim Mizukaj of Karigakur no Sato I presume, he asked while Mei gave him her cheerful smile, this time the clone blushed. Yeah, she replied cheerfully while both of them wore a challenging smirk inwardly. Come on, you think you can make me blush and get away with it, she thought with an inward smirk. Is that so huh, I accept your challenge thought the clone, 
before he took Mei's soft hand and kissed the top of it. Ao and Chojiro's J dropped in astonishment that someone had the balls to do that to their mazukage while Mei's face was as red as tomato, she certainly didn't expect him to do that. My name is Uzumaki Naruto, pleased to meet your acquaintance, he said, yet again smiling charmingly at her while she could only stutter in response. Chijirumi M. Mei, Ao and Chojiro had shocked look on their faces, no one was able to do that to their mazukage as long as they could remember, it was like seeing Kisame crying over his broken teeth. You there, popsicle guy, said yet another clone while a lollipop sucking Omoe turned around to see an anxious looking clone. You shouldn't eat lollipops as they contain artificial flavored sweetener which may affect your taste buds, liver and your stomach leading to digestion problems, which can further lead to constipation and affect your overall performance during the missions. And if you fail any important mission, your village may get in trouble or you may get demoted leading to the destruction of your entire ninja career he said anxiously while flailing his arms, whereas Omoe had an equally anxious look on his face when he understood the gravity of this ridiculous situation while Karui's eyebrows were twitching dangerously at having another anxious freak. Omoe nodded at the clone silently before turning towards Karui who had murder in her eyes, if he annoyed the crap out of her. I think he's right, but do I sound that ridiculous? He asked in a hushed tone while Karui bonked him on the head. Of course you baka. Took you a while to figure out didn't it? She yelled while Omoe just clamped his ears further pissing her off. Well ahm, that aside Lee had a surprised look on his face like everyone else but was brought out of his stupor when he felt the pain searing in his muscles before he completely vanished from everyone's sight except maybe elite Junins and the cages. The clones began to dispel at astounding rates, courtesy of Lee who was eliminating all the clones like they were nothing but this was all the time the original Naruto needed as a red chakra cloak started to slowly form around his body. Everyone's eyes widened when they felt the evil and the malicious aura radiating off Naruto. Those who knew about the Kyubi were shocked to no end to see a Jinchuriki this young, willingly using his Biju's chakra, and Kyubi at that who was, said, to be the most difficult one to tame. Even Hiruzen didn't see this one coming, he had no idea that the boy could willingly harness the demonic chakra. Gee this is amazing, at such young age, stuttered Yugito, who couldn't believe her eyes while Nibi was constantly screaming in her head to claim him as her mate. The only one who wasn't surprised was Kakashi, as he was the one who helped Naruto in controlling his Yuki after the wave mission. Seeing Lee's speed, he was kinda expecting him to do this. Naruto dispelled his remaining clones while Lee was on his knees from the pain and was watching him in astonishment that he still had chakra left, although he had no idea why it was red. Lee's eyes widened when he noticed Naruto's transformed features, mainly his eyes, Rinnegan still activated. They were blood red, one black ring surrounding a small black slitted pupil. Kitten, he looks so hot, you've got to claim him, if not then let me out and I'll do it myself, yelled Nibi in excitement her demonic urges making her want to bang him as long as he was conscious while a blushing Yugito just continued to ignore her. Meanwhile Hinata had slipped into unconscious some time ago, mainly due to fatigue, both physically and emotional and chakra exertion. I've gotta make this quick, don't want the likes of Shikamaru to suspect anything, although I think I'm already under his suspicious gaze. I'll just have to use that move to finish this, I'm sorry bushy brow, but this may hurt worse than your hidden lotus he thought before creating several Yuki and forced shadow clones while he himself charged his hands with lightning natured chakra to prepare for his final attack. Lee was just about to take a mad dash towards Naruto when he felt himself flying in midair while his eyes widened at the pain he was feeling, courtesy of an extremely fast shadow clone delivering a quick uppercut to his jaw while the other shadow clones jumped towards him before delivery a combined painful leg drop resulting in him falling towards the floor at a fast rate. Now, thought the original Naruto before using a chakra enhanced jump towards the ceiling while Lee was falling. The shadow clones in midair dispelled themselves while the shadow clone who had uppercut him was standing at the exact spot where Lee was falling. Just as Lee was about to collide, the doppelganger standing below him yelled. Shinra Tensai, divine judgment, the effects were immediate as Lee was propelled upwards at high speeds, much to the extreme shock of everyone except Hiruzen. Meanwhile the original Naruto who had jumped towards the ceiling used it as a springboard using chakra on his feet to increase the recoil power before he was on a collision course with Lee, 
both of them moving towards each other at high speeds, invisible to almost everyone except the elite Junins and the cages. While in midair, Naruto started to spin just like in Gatsuga, the lightning-natured chakra and the Yuki flared while both of his fists were pointed at Lee's fastly approaching body. His quickly descending body looked like it was on fire to everyone, mainly because of Yuki and his extremely fast velocity before he yelled. Akuma no Raiko Kobushi, Ryusei Kokusukuryu. Demonic lightning fist. Corkscrew meteor. All of this combo had happened in a span of two to three seconds in front of naked eyes before Naruto's fist came in contact with Lee's body, the green taijutsu genin spitting blood due to painful blow before they began to descend at the ground level at extremely high speeds, resulting in a violent crash shaking the cores of the arena. Boom. Such was the impact of their crash that large chunks of earth flew out of the smoke due to the impact, while everyone had to shield their eyes from the debris, it felt like an earthquake had struck. Along with B had their jaws on the ground, it was the most lethal taijutsu move that they had ever seen. They could only hope that the green kid was alive. Such destructive move, but Lee should pull out. He's had worse than this in his training, thought an impressed guy. He was a bit sad that his student lost as he knew there was no way he was coming out of that in fighting condition but not every day you get to see an attack like this and from a genin all the more. Gara had an astonished look on his face, he now himself was doubting if he would be able to beat his fellow Jinchuriki. Shukaku had told him Naruto was the host of Kayubi no Kitsune when Naruto was releasing Ayumi's chakra, much to the shock of the sand user. Naruto, what the, thought copy ninja not even able to think properly at the moment, while Sasuke had a look of extreme frustration and hate, his teeth gritted and fists clenched by his side. Sakura, Kin, Tamari and Ino had looks of awe and admiration on their faces. Asuma's cigarette had fallen from his mouth in shock, which was in way much more shocking for his team and fellow Junins as his cigarette was just like Omoe's lollipop to him. The Ice Queens had a look of utter surprise on their faces just like Mei, Yugito and Samui. Meanwhile the smoke cleared out for them to see a barely conscious, bruised and tattered body of Lee, almost like he was embedded in the crater while a panting Naruto could be seen standing beside him while blood was seeping from his mouth before he deactivated his dujutsu, the red chakra as well as lightning chakra no longer present. Hayate had an astonished look on his face when he saw Naruto. He can still stand after that attack thought the proctor before slowly approaching them as he had distanced himself from the crazy fight that was covering the whole arena. Damn, that attack took a lot out of me, good thing I held back or else he would have been killed, but still this move was tougher than I thought. Guess it's not the same as memorizing the attack than actually doing it. I still need to go a long way, if I find an opponent as fast as Lee my entire ninjutsu arsenal is almost useless, I'll have to increase the speed of hand seals. But still, I never thought I'd find someone as strong as Lee in these exams, except maybe Gara to give me such a hard time, he thought while inwardly sighing to himself before he bent besides Lee who was barely conscious and in a whole lot of pain. T that, W was a G gray great fight, N Naruto kun, said Lee with a small smile while coughing painfully, his one eye closed while almost half of his face was covered in blood. Naruto was going to bonk him on the head if not for his injuries for being so reckless and going as far as opening the fifth gate. Why? Dot why did you go so far you idiot? You knew that you would progress to the finals with the skills you displayed. Then why? Why did you put your body to risk? I didn't want to use this move on you, it's very lethal and destructive, but with you using the fifth gate I had to do it, said Naruto apologetically while Hayate was standing near them hearing their conversation with interest whereas Lee just offered him a pained smile. Inwardly smacking his head, Naruto started applying his special chakra on his body leading to the drastic reduction of pain while Lee's eyes just widened but he didn't ask anything, seeing what Naruto was pulling today he could believe almost anything. He wasn't an idiot, though he acted like one, but still he wasn't an idiot. He, he just for the same reason as you Naruto-kun, I, wanted recognition, wanting to prove, myself to the world, that I can be a good shinobi, with just taijutsu, he said, still in pain but much less than before while Naruto's eyes widened. Bushy brow, hey, you baka, you're already very strong, your strongest opponent I could have gotten here, he said while grinning whereas moisture gathered in Lee's eyes who grinned back at him. Arigato Naruto-kun, 
From now on, you're my eternal rival, he said before passing out while Naruto just sweat dropped before chuckling to himself. Yeah, but that's something I don't look forward to, he said, still chuckling to himself while remembering the famed Kakashi Guy rivalry of Konoha and the ridiculous challenges of Guy. Hayate just smiled at their exchange, the will of fire burned brightly in those two and if he knew any better, they definitely deserved the title of Chunin. Winner. Uzumaki Naruto. He yelled while instead of some cheers which Hayate expected, there was just stunned silence. No one could still come out of their respective shocks, this fight was something else. It had easily crossed the boundaries of a genin level fight. Meanwhile Naruto just blinked before he stood up. He was so focused in the match that he forgot to see their shocked faces, but now he was thoroughly enjoying himself. What, I think we fought just fine to deserve some clapping didn't we? Yelled Naruto for everyone to hear while giving his foxy grin breaking everyone out of their shocks, some of them blushing in embarrassment what? You expect guy to have a blush on his face? And began clapping for him. The medics came before carefully putting Lee on the stretcher and leaving the arena while Naruto bowed dramatically to them. Upon seeing the names starting to flash randomly he walked slowly to the elevated platform, ignoring the looks of shock and chose to stand alone for a while, avoid the questions he knew would be coming and just observe the matches. Time skip. One hour later. Naruto was bored out of his mind, currently the secondly last had just finished. After his fight, the only match he found a bit interesting was, Shino vs. Gara vs. Yoroi, which was right after his match but the two was quickly over as he deduced that Yoroi was a chakra leecher so the moment he tried to absorb Gara's chakra, he also absorbed some of the Yuki. The results was immediate as he screamed in agony before slipping into unconsciousness, Shino too couldn't do much with his insects as they were not able to absorb Gara's harmful chakra, though the bug user did try everything he could but he just couldn't penetrate Gara's sand defense. So in the end, Gara was going to kill him but Shino being the smart self immediately forfeit the match, but that didn't stop the Jinchuriki from trying to kill him with his Sabaku Susu desert funeral, however the timely intervention from the Junin saved the bug user's ass. The next two matches were even more boring. After Gara's match, the next match was, Shikamaru vs. Tamari vs. Ino, but he was interested at first as to how they would fight their own teammates. He was surprised to see the determination in Ino's eyes though, he knew that look, it was of wanting prove herself. Though she didn't last much longer in the match due to her limited arsenal, but she did put up a good fight. So in the end, Shikamaru lost, although barely as Tamari too was exhausted due to using her wind attacks one after another. The arena being open-spaced, Shikamaru could install the fight to prepare some strategy so he was forced to fight head-on. The lazy ass never being the front-line fighter, still gave trouble to Tamari by manipulating the shadows of the elevated platform the proctor or whatever he could use for his advantage. Though Naruto was surprised that the Nara was actually, for once taking something seriously but at last, Tamari was the winner. The next match was, Tenten vs. Sakura vs. Kayan. He had thought that Sakura would be immediately eliminated, but to his and almost everybody's immense shock who knew her, she was able to hold her own mainly by using Genjutsus. Naruto had turned his head questionably towards Kakashi to find him I smiling back at him. He immediately understood what was going on there. I still can't believe he was secretly training all three of us, he thought while chuckling to himself, his sensei had somewhat, awkward methods of training, but he wasn't complaining after seeing the results. But due to her low chakra reserves, she was the first one to lose before it came down to just Kin and Tenten. Both of them being long-range fighters, the match dragged on but Kin surprised Tenten by suddenly engaging her in taijutsu in a burst of speed and ultimately the sound Kunoichi came out as winner. Although Naruto wasn't surprised much, considering she was matching Sasuke toe-to-toe -to -toe in their little fight in the rest room. Which brings us to the current situation and the last match, where the only contestants remaining were the emo king and some other sound genin whose name Naruto didn't know. Would Uchiha Sasuke and Suruga Masumi step down please, said Hayate while coughing. Sasuke had a frown on his face, the fight of Naruto still replaying in his head before he jumped down followed by Masumi. Alright, now as you know the matches are supposed to contain three contestants and the current situation presents us only two. So, is there anyone else willing to have another go, 
it may add up to your credit in the finals, said Hayate, still coughing while Sasuke's eyes widened before a cocky smirk settled on his face. You, fight me Dobi, he said, grabbing the opportunity while glaring at Naruto who merely raised his eyebrows. No, said Naruto calmly while Sasuke clenched his fists. What, are you scared Dobi? asked the Uchiha with a cocky smirk hoping to rile up his teammate while Naruto just replied him back calmly. No, or did you forget how I kicked your ass in the forest? Sasuke gritted his teeth while Kin and Ino snickered at the remark. Fight me loser, he yelled in frustration, his Sharingan activated while Naruto just shook his head. Meanwhile everyone was watching this scene going on with amusement and interest before a smirk settled on Sasuke's face. I'd bet your parents were just like you, scared and weak nay, he said with a smirk while Naruto perked at the remark, his temper quickly rising to the surface, barely able to control his rage. Quote dot, Uchiha, he growled while clenching his fists, which were white from the pressure while the Ice Queen seemed to emitting killer intent which our poor Uchiha wasn't able to detect. And I bet you mother was a weak slut and probably died as a whore, he said, his smirk growing, the poor bastard unaware of the danger that was lurking below him. Uh oh, thought Hiruzen, pitying the Uchiha. While he himself wanted to kick the genin's ass for that comment, he knew Naruto would do a better job. The moment Sasuke had finished his sentence, the whole arena was overcome with a strong wave of killing intent, so strong that even Orochimaru was sweating. Apparently it seemed that the killer intent radar of our last Uchiha was off, as he couldn't feel anything while his smirk grew but it faltered when Naruto just vanished from his sight. Start the match Proctor, said Naruto as his voice changed to that of a demonic one while Sasuke turned his head to see Naruto whose eyes were red, Rinnegan deactivated, with slitted black pupil, his whisker marks more defined, his hair spikier than before, his fangs and nails elongated which overall gave him a demonic appearance. Meanwhile Hayate gulped at the ridiculous amount of killing intent that Naruto was emitting whereas poor Misugi was buckling on his knees, sweat pouring down his forehead as prayed to Kami to let him come out this alive. Kami, at least spare his Sharingan, thought an uncharacteristic Orochimaru who had doubts if Sasuke's body would be usable enough for him after the match. Thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video be sure to like comment and subscribe as well as checking out the author on fanfiction.net.